Hey guys, it's me, Meteor, and welcome back to Kirby the Forgotten Land. Well, kind of, sort of. We're here to just show off something. I forgot to show off all the pictures and the cool things you see. As you can see, you get a little picture for little everything you do. Isn't that nice? And clean the 100% clear thing. You also get to zoom in on them, too. Look at all that. One for the treasure roads, one for doing the Ultimate Cup Z, one for the regular Meta Knight Cup. Uh, the... I'm not sure what... Are there two pictures for the Ultimate Cup Z? I'm trying to think which one is which. Let's see, top right or top bottom. Top bottom, that makes sense. Either way, the whole point of this video here is to show off the figures. So, let's go ahead and begin. I'll be reading all of them. And of course, not all of them have text, thankfully. But uh, a lot of them sure do. So my voice is gonna get really tired, I'm sure. Either way, starting off with Kirby. Kirby was pulled into a mysterious vortex that appeared in the sky over his home on Planet Popstar. When he woke up, he was in a new world. Traveling through that vortex also gave Kirby a new and mysterious power. Let's see what it could do. Onward to adventure. A mystical new friend you met in a mysterious new world. You found Elflin as he was trying to save the Waddle Dees from the Beast Pack. He seems happy to be Kirby's guide, sharing helpful advice to save the Waddle Dees and rebuild their town. Thanks, Elflin. Bandana Waddle Dee was pulled through the vortex along with Kirby. When he heard that his fellow Waddle Dees were being captured by the Beast Pack, he grabbed his trusty spear and ran to help. He can join you as player two while you explore the new world. Regular Waddle Dee. These delightful residents of Planet Popstar landed in the new world before Kirby arrived. Things looked grim when wild beasts began to capture them and steal their precious food, but with Kirby's help, they're rebuilding town and starting over. And then he got the abilities. Uh, Slice through this world as a sword-building green-handed hero. Try charging up before you swing here for extra power. Train hard and become this world's new sword master. Bomb. Hold on the button and aim to throw. Got it? Hold, aim, throw. Throw, hit, boom. You can run and throw to them too, or roll them ahead of you to get an explosive strike. Cutter. Swish. Sling that sharp-edged boomerang. Use it to grab far off items, hold the button down or freeze it in midair, and charge it up. They'll make it extra powerful. Swish. Fire. This ability is hot, hot, hot. Light fuses, burn through obstacles, and toast your enemies with the power of a raging fire. Run, jump, then attack to blast forward as a fireball. Ranger. Time for some shooting star sharp shooting. Pew pew. Hold the button down to charge and aim, then let go to send the sparkling shot flying. Charge it up for bigger blasts. Needle. Ouch, ouch. Careful with those spikes. Jab an enemy in place or pick them up by rolling around. Nab a whole bunch of them together, then launch them all at once. Pow. Ice. <laughs> I, whatever, I was trying to do something. So cold. Can you see your own breath? Make a chunk of ice, then kick it forward. Skate and slide wherever you go. You'll even glad right for mud and magma. You know, funny story, when I lived in Florida, it was so rare where temperatures dropped below freezing or even got near them, that for us, it was really cool and amazing to see our own breath when we were going to school. And uh, anywhere else is like, that's just common knowledge in the winter, but whatever, it was cool for me. Car. Car Mouth Kirby. Kirby gained the mysterious mouthful mode ability after he flew through that vortex. And then they say that same for every car mouth mode in the first two sentences. Now we can stuff an entire car into his mouth. When he does, he turns into a peppy pink car that can jump and use turbo dash. It's a nice day for a scenic drive. Turn up the radio. Traffic cone. Cone mouth Kirby. Kirby gained the mysterious mouth mode. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Now we can stuff an entire cone into his mouth. Use your pointy head to jab below you and bust up open cracks in the ground or on pipes. You're out of control, Kirby. Water tank. Dome mouth Kirby. Kirby gained the mysterious mouth. Now we can wrap around one of these and twist until it pops open. Think there's anything good inside? Only one way to find out. It's like a giant gotcha machine in a way. Storage cabinet. Storage mouth Kirby. Wiggle and thrash until you tip over. Hey, who put this behind the lockers? Rental lockers. Bolted storage mouth Kirby. This one won't budge. Wiggle, 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 and whoa! He just took a whole chunk of that wall down. Use this to find hidden routes you didn't know about. 
except that's not true. You only use it once in the entire game, and it's required for passage. It's not a hidden route whatsoever, but whatever. Captured Waddle Dee. One of the Waddle Dees held captive by the Fearsome Beast Pack. There are so many out there waiting to be saved. You can almost hear them calling for help. Wah, 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 wah. Let me out, let me out. Wait, you hear that too? One of them must be nearby. Fun fact about this particular figure, in Japan and I believe other countries, or other countries specifically, uh, they give a name for those crows. And I believe they're called clocks. Or not, not clocks, they're called... Uh, I just, I just saw this. Give me, give me a second. All right, I was close. It's clocker, like a uh, crow and lock, because they're locking things down. Uh, I believe it's actually not this one. It's the golden one. Uh, this one here is where you see the name for them normally. Uh, the only way people found this out is because Kirby Informer asked on Twitter, asking for information. Then someone showed a quote from Kumazaki, I forget from where, where he specifically showed the English translation name for those crows. And they're called clock clockers. Clock, clockers. I, I just said that right. Clockers. Yeah, that sounds right. So, it sounds weird. Like I, you, you would think that there'd be like a V a C R in there, but they just, despite there being crows, they just whatever. Point is, capture bottle D's. The beast pack managed to catch these three bottle D's with one golden cage. If they work together, they might be able to. Oh, never mind. They're too sad to move. All they can do is cry out for help. Wah 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 wah. Somebody save them. A woofy. A common beast that can be found all over the new world. They're pretty cute, but they have a dangerous wild side. They'll growl and jump at anyone who crosses them. A whole bunch of these critters attack the Waddle Dees. Funny, you'd think they get along. Cappy. Bronto Bert. Cabu. Bouncy. Gabin. Shotso. Gordo. Gordo Bar. Big Cabu. Buffahorn. Behold, is the brutal brutish Buffahorn. Weak attacks won't stand a chance against this critter's forward tackle. Good thing they have a hard time stopping. If you're careful, you can trick them into running off cliffs. They'll be okay down there. They're real tough. Tortoner. Tortoner has a whole shell made of concrete, as if it walked off with somebody's sidewalk. It has a thick skull and a mean bite, but its body is pretty delicate. A mouthful mode ability might help you crack through its shell and land a brutal blow from above. Tortilding. Whoa, Tortilding shells of whole building. This big body must be some kind of boss for the smaller beasts. It enjoys basking in the sun, so it climbs into high spots and claims the whole area as its territory. Must take a long time for this critter to get up there. Late night, Poppy Bros, Sir Kibble, Hothead, Bernard. This uppity pup is an expert marksman, Pew Pew, who's quick on his feet as he patrols the new world. His eyes are hidden under his hat, but it doesn't seem to affect his aim. He also has an impressive sniffer that can track prey near or far. Needless. Chili. Jab Hog. Charge those points up, then zing, let him fly. Jab Hog is famous in the New World for its spiky spines. They were short and cute when it was young, but they eventually grew into dangerous needles. It'll jab anything that gets too close, so approach with caution. Wanted posters, arrow sign, pop flower, tulip, star block, bomb block. Oh yeah, only things that have three stars or higher have text, by the way. Switch, target switch, lantern switch, cannon, warp star, treasure chest, radio, car shop sign. Here we go. This logo belonged to an auto shop named Holine Custom Autos, part of Holine Corp. Holine also sort industrial parts, managed construction, and made all kinds of stuff. From buildings to streets to amusement park rides. Remember, if it's quality, it's Holine. Er, perhaps it was, would be more accurate. A Lival Mall sign. This was the logo for a Lival Mall, owned by a Lival Holding Company. Making life even livelier was their corporate slogan. They ran a wide range of businesses, entertainment, arenas, food shops, service industries. Now the remains of those businesses can be found in all kinds of places. Empty and alone. That's deep. Lightron Works sign. The Lightron Works company was a massive corporation that invested in research and development within all kinds of fields. Electro, bio, astro, and more. Lightron eventually split up, giving rise to many rival companies and countless heated corporate battles. 
cherry, watermelon, tangerine, melon, star coin, green star coin, red, blue, one, two, invincible candy, maximum tomato. If your health is low, just eat a maximum tomato to fully heal yourself. They're packed with nutrients. Did these fall through the same vortex as Kirby and his friends, or were they in the new world already? It's hard to tell, but everyone seems to enjoy them, even the beast pack. Cafe Staff Kirby Kirby's taken on a sidekick at the counter of the Waddle Dee Cafe. He's dressed like a focused employee, but he's secretly fighting the urge to gobble up each dish himself. This might be his greatest struggle yet. Stay strong, Kirby. Fishing Pond Kirby Ah, Kirby's doing a bit of fishing at the old fishing pond. He looks super, super relaxed. Maybe too relaxed. Hey, pay attention, Kirby. There's exciting stuff swimming in that pond, including the legendary Bling Blipper of Waddle Dee Town. Wise Waddle Dee. When you need wisdom, visit Wise Waddle Dee. He always has a tip handy and seems to know a lot about this new world. His magical encyclopedia can collect and share rankings from all over the world. Where did he even find that book? Delivery Waddle Dee. This dutiful delivery D works for Waddle Dee liveries in town. He gets helpful items to your doorstep with blinding speed. Kirby's handwriting makes it hard to read the present code sometimes, but this kind soul approves the orders anyway. So yeah, it, it really is funny that, that Kirby can legitimately write. It's funny. Cafe Staff Waddle Dee. This short order cook loves to feed his fellow Waddle Dees at the cafe in town. He even kept them fed after he crashed into the new world. His cooking smelled so good, which is how the Beast Pack found them. And now that the cafe has been rebuilt, it's time to get to work. Step right up, step right up. This Waddle Dee runs the town's favorite game, Tilt and Roll Kirby. The other Waddle Dees love to play this game. In fact, they wouldn't stop asking him for more. That might be explained why he added the daunting extra hard difficulty. Item Shop Waddle Dee. This enterprising Waddle Dee opened his own item shop in town. He sells special items that will help you out. He also supplies the cafe with an energy drink that he makes by hand. They have a special bonus or business arrangement. Two energy drinks for three Kirby burger burgers. That, that I stud is still a terrible deal. Three Kirby burgers only get you like half your health up where he gives you three en two energy drinks will give you like for six bars of health. I mean, come on. The mysterious vortex brought Mr. Fossey to the new world too. He arrived shortly before Kirby and immediately joined the beast pack. The change in wardrobe must have made it an easy choice. It's tough to be the new guy, but his fellow beasts love working with him. Strong armed beast, Goromondo. Goromondo considers the local shopping mall to be his personal territory. As part of the beast pack's executive council, He's in charge of capturing Waddle Dees and gathering food. He tends to eat all the food himself, he just can't help it. This behavior has earned him an earful from his boss more than once. Drill. Now we're on to volume two. Ooh, we're a quarter of the way there to this descriptions. And my throat is already feeling it. Burrow underground with your mighty drill. You can use this to dodge enemy attacks. If you dig in certain spots, you might be able to sneak off into off-limits areas. <laughs> that's, uh, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be, what's the word, uh, implying something, but whatever. Tornado. Pull enemies, blocks, and stars into your cyclone, then release them to deal damage. This ability's controls might make you dizzy, so whirl, swirl, and twirl, but try not to hurl. Hammer. A sturdy hammer with an intense attack power. Your reach is short, but it's worth it to bonk enemies and stakes. Hold the button to charge and let go to do a hammer flip. Crash. Danger, danger. This ability makes the biggest boom of all, and you can hold the button down to make it even biggest er. Nothing will escape that blast. Whoosh. Noble Ranger. The most experienced of marksmen requires the fanciest of hats. Fire a barrage of shots with dual wilted pop guns. You can release a flurry of charge shots too. Pew pew, pew pew. Uh, Gigant, Gigant Sword. Gigant, Gigant, whatever. This Biggle Sword is definitely Gigant. Yeah, see, it, if it's a hard G, then why would it be making that pun there? That pun wouldn't even make sense if it's a hard G. The sword is definitely Gigantic. It's like, like if, it's, if it's like Gigantic or Gigantic. Gigantic. Yeah, whatever. That, 
anyway, it's a bit hard to swing around, but it'll keep you well guarded. Use it to shield yourself from an attack, then go on the offensive. Chain Bomb. Chain your bombs together to explode all of them at once. Hold the button down, aim, and throw to place them. The more bombs you connect, the more damage they'll do. Shock Room Cutter. You can dual you can dual wield cutters? Whoa! Sling both shock rooms forward to slash a wide area in front of you. It's fun to watch them fly, as long as you're doing the throwing. Volcano Fire. Boom, whoosh, this volcano is erupting. Harness the power of a geothermal energy to spew lava in front of you. Blaze through enemies and make them feel the heat. Clutter Needle. Pointy, spiky clutter all rolled up into a ball. It's needles upon needles. What a powerful weapon. Roll forward then release to send a sharp cutter flying out around you. Ouch. Floor Tornado. Grace, elegance, beauty, and brutal attacks. Pull your enemies into a flurry of feathers and turn battles into sophisticated ballets. Ow. Hurts almost as much as point... Shoes? Is that supposed to be pointed or are point shoes legitimately a thing? I need to look that up. Toy Hammer. Sure, this may be the cutest bonk to ever bonk a bonk, but this is no plaything. It has rapid, continuous attacks with enough power to hammer stakes and crush enemies. Best ability, baby. Time crash. We didn't think the time the ability that we didn't think the crash's ability boom could get any biggest -er, but this one can break time itself. Slow down time, then act fast to cause some real destruction. Light ring, gear ring, ring mouth Kirby. Huff and puff out blasts of air to blow sand away, defeat enemies, or spin windmills. Boat. Boat and ring mouth Kirby. Use blast of air to move your boat and slam into enemies. You can even bust through cracked walls. Light bulb. Light bulb mouth Kirby. Illuminate your surroundings with a glow from your gullet. It's hard to move when you're lit up, so study your surroundings. Go dark again and wobble onward. Carefully. Spaceship Wandaria. Coaster mouth Kirby. Zip along the rails and tilt left or right to dodge. Everybody strap in because the Spaceship Wandaria is blasting into the future. Wee! Glunk. Flipper. Fowley. Wolf. Scarfy. Squishy. Spookstep. Fanta. Ghost Gordo. That's a really cool enemy, by the way. But I thought it was definitely my favorite new enemy additions. Uh, Rabaru and Orabaru. This little, the little one? That's Rabaru. The big one? That's Orabaru. The O is for, oh my gosh, look at how high they can jump. Try to be under one when they land. Their fellow critters like to pet them because they're so fluffy. Don't touch a tail. They hate that. Nocodile. This robust swimmer has a powerful jaw. It flows on the water surface, watching and waiting for its prey. Its height is as tough as armor, so you'll need something bigger than a copy of to take him down. Do you think mouthful mode would do the trick? Balloon Meister. It's not a very creative name. Balloon Meister loves to do tricks. No one knows where it learned them. Perhaps it's hereditary? Whatever it is, the tricks are fun. Just don't let the ball touch you. Try to inhale it instead to get the bomb ability. Hey, wait. Where did it get that ball? Gigazzo. Digga. For Digga, moving through the ground is as easy as swimming. It just dives underground. Then wiggle, wiggle, jump. Surprise, you never know when to expect Digga. Kinda rude, actually. It'll also throw gums of dirt at you and launch on ground-bound meals. Let's just skip past that. Twister. Mookie. What a happy little ape. Smile and dance. Mookie. Watch him swing and throw his little hammer around. You can tell he's happy to see you. Just look at that smile. Huh? That's not a smile? He's trying to scare us? Well, uh, it's working now. Yikes. Bomber. Animal sand sculpture. Crab. Fish. Steak. Windmill switch. Solar panel switch. Blooming flowers. Knock knock nut. Lost ducklings. Those are so adorable. Captured roulette. Surprise alien board. Race car. Twirling star rocket, runaway parade car, face cut out photo stand, one Daria statue. One Daria was named after its founder, an author who wrote stories about a dog that explores outer space. Those stories became incredibly incredibly popular and were later used as the basis for Wandaria theme park, 
a land of dreams for kids of all ages. Not at all inspired and copying off Disneyland at all. No, it, it really is hilarious, uh, the fact that they clearly have, like, their... This is basically legit Disneyland. And, uh, there are some interesting theories about this. I've seen one that Wandaria might be the one who drew Drasha and Klaisha in the first place. Or, I'm sorry, Drasha and Paintra in the first place in the studio. It was left behind in a studio. And considering that these guys have, uh, well... We'll, we'll get more into that later, but uh, it's interesting theory. One dog and Wandy. Wandaria's founder based the park's most popular characters on their own two dogs. One dog and Wandy. These two friends travel through the cosmos together in their stories, working as a team and having all kinds of wild adventures. Pumpkin. Ear of corn. Tin of fish. Order of sushi. Milk bottle. Soft drink. Tub of popcorn. Cup of juice. Hamburger. Order of fries. Order of ta- do you really need to put order of between all of these? Shortcake. I guess not. <laughs> Chocolate bar. Donut. Macaron. Car mouth cake. Curry burger. Wild bonkers. The mysterious vortex brought bonkers to the new world too. They arrived before Kirby and quickly joined the ranks of the fearsome beast pack. They really like their new look and they're getting along with all their new co-workers. Especially the Mookies. I can't tell if that's they as in like the whole amount of bonkers or they as in gender neutral of course for wild frosty or they clearly used uh him so maybe gender neutral mm -hmm. florina florina always puts on an elegant show when she attacks yeah here again it's like the other mini bosses i guess it's once going for she don't get too caught up in her performance you'll get caught up in her tornado to match she's very dedicated to her dance career and thinks of every battle as a new lesson they keep her on her toes. Wild Edge. The mysterious vortex brought got, <laughs> Edge to the new world too. They arrived before Kirby and fell in with the ranks of the beast pack. Despite the wild wardrobe change, they really stand out among the rest of the pack. But they'll stand their guard against the, and they'll still guard their stations with feroc ferocity. So once again, they, but it also says their stations, not their station. So I don't know. Probably, I'm guess. It's hard to say. Unfriendly fronds, Tropic Woods. Fresh ocean air and warm sunlight helps Tropic Woods grow big and strong. Its giant coconuts will cause big explosions after they drop. It has non-exploding coconuts too, and they're supposed to be delicious. Few have never, t few have ever tasted them, but many have tried. So uh, I guess it's really a coconut to die for. <laughs> uh, Lethal Leopard Chloraline. I like how it has their title in there too. Claroline tried to cut your adventure short as at the Wandaria Circus. She normally acts as a point of contact for the Beast Pack's boss, but she couldn't resist the chance to track down Kirby herself. Her grace and speed are quite impressive, so the rest of the pack think of her as an idol. She has lots of fans. <laughs> I bet she does. Sleep. Just one more minute, please. Uh, oh, come on. I'm too sleepy. Just let me recover some health with a bit of rest. <sighs> Pencil drill. This drill evolution is mighty and graphite-y. It's not ideal for writing, but you can use it to launch out of the ground and shoot out of pencil rockets. Now that's the right stuff. <laughs> Frosty ice. Frosty ice gives you chilling powers and a really cute hat. Blow out freezing blasts of air and create a line of snowmen. Aw, they all have Frosty's face. He must be so proud. Dragon fire. Become a legendary monster with the power of a dragon. Oh yeah, we're in volume three. I just noticed that. Spew fire like a flamethrower. Jump, attack, and glide through the sky. You can do all sorts of dragony stuff. Vending machine. Vending mouth Kirby. Fire soda cans forward to attack enemies and blast through barriers. Your ammo is limited, so keep an eye out for any cans that can be picked up. Yeah, it, there's only one stage in the entire game where the limited ammo has any effect. There's no way you can pretty much run out of ammo otherwise. However, you still pick up the cans because that extra health is very nice. Stairs. Stairs Mouth Kirby. Move the stairs around to access hard to reach spots. You also can tip over yourself to crush enemies. Wham! Pipe. Pipe Mouth Kirby. Get a good forward roll going and nothing can stop you. Assuming you time your jumps over gaps well, that is. 
Scissor lift. Scissor lift mouth Kirby. Raise and lower yourself to reach items and dodge enemy attacks. You can also spit the lift out while extended to reach the top of tall platforms. Water pipe. Water balloon mouth Kirby. Fill yourself up in a water pipe, wobble over to a patch of muck, and spray it away to clear your path forward. Thanks for cleaning up. Glider arch. Arch mouth Kirby. This form turns into a graceful glider that soars on the wind. Steer through tight spaces and use your spin tackle to swat away enemies. Enjoy your flight. Captured Elflin. Elflin was captured by King DDD after the battle at Winterhorns. His cheerful advice, once so common and helpful, was replaced with heavy silence. Don't be sad, Kirby. Primal Obufi. Original Wasteland is the birthplace of the Beast Pack. So it's no wonder the Awoofy has found there are more wild than their far off cousins. They're more aggressive in every way from their bark to their bite. Their primal ancestors must be pleased. Mumbies. Totanga. Snacker. This ravenous reptile can swallow its enemies whole. Once it spots prey it'll slither after it as swift as it can. Some of the things it tries to swallow seem unreasonably large, but its stretchy body allows it to gulp them down. Wait. Why does that sound familiar? Pacto. Poison Crocum. Poison Crocum is a giant frog covered in icky, sticky poison. The gunk covering its body protects it from all attacks, but a quick splash of water will wash it clean to reveal a beautiful and vulnerable blue hide. It must have a great skincare routine. Naughty. Cor Corori. Handmade Kirby. I still love that. Handmade Elflin. Handmade dance partner. Ah, it's looking nice. Lizard. <laughs> Just a straight up normal lizard. Animal snow sculpture. Breakable block. Nail. Speakers. Soft serve traffic cone. Clock ring. Ice cream cone. Chocolate ice cream bar. Steak. Hunk of meat. Roast chicken. Plate of fried eggs. Rice ball. I sure it's not a jelly donut. A loaf of French bread. Milk carton. Omelette. Cup of coffee, pudding, star coin pile, energy drink, life up, attack boost, speed boost, blueprint. These precious paper plans, uh, that's a tongue twister, will show you how to upgrade your copy abilities. Kirby can't do much with them on his own, but the Waddle Dee in the weapons shop can use them to dink donk bonk each ability to be even more powerful. What a skilled engineer. The Lone Swordsman, Meta Knight. The mysterious vortex brought Meta Knight to the New World 2. He quickly tasked himself with finding a way back to Popstar until a beast pack attacked Waddle Dee Town. The besieged settlement needed protecting, and a swordsman never ignores a chance to train. His royal nemesis, King DDD. King DDD arrived in the New World shortly before Kirby and his friends. It looked like he joined forces with the beast pack, but that's no excuse for his mistreatment of the Waddle Dees. His iconic gown seems to have been altered to match his newfound allegiance. He seems way, way stronger somehow. Armor Plated Prancer, Silly Dillo. Silly Dillo is an incredible dancer, as long as the dance involves spinning. It's a nocturnal critter, so it can see quite well in the dark. It seems to have orders from its boss to find something important, but all it brings home is junk. What was it supposed to find again? Something small and floaty? Hmm. Better Knight Sword. The Better Knight Sword has a bunch of cool attacks, just like its namesake. Sword slide, jump, and attack to use upper caliber. With full health, you'll even sling crescent shots. We're in volume 4 now. Wild Hammer. This hefty hammer is made from super tough stone. It's too heavy for quick hits, but each powerful swing will deal explosive damage. You'll even crack the ground itself. Worst hammer ability by far. Buzzsaw Cutter. What's the buzz, cuz? This cutter evolution has increased its power and flying distance. It'll also ricochet off walls, so aim carefully to send it extra far. Clink, clank, gluzz. Clink, clank's one of my favorite fifth gen Pokemon. Crystal Needle. Oh, how pretty. Ouch. And sharp. Release the button while rolling to launch spiky crystals in front of you. You'll also roll longer and leave spikes in your wake. Homing Bomb. Toss a homing bomb, then watch it get to work. It'll patrol the area until it spots an enemy, then race toward them and explode. Chain bombs together to corner your foes. Twin Drill. Unleash brutal attacks with double the drill power. 
Your speed and damage are both increased, and you can attack enemies above you while still burying below. Blizzard Ice. Don a beautiful tiara of ice and become a frigid force of nature. Use this ability to skate around enemies and stop them cold with a volley of faux freezing icicles. Brrr, I, I still can't do that. Mm, walk to bed and get all cuddly cozy. You'll show everyone your full potential after you wake up. Storm Tornado. Ominous clouds, powerful winds. This scary storm roars to life with the press of a button. Pull enemies into your cyclone by swirling into them. Then attack with lightning. Space Ranger. Blast off, Space Ranger. Fire laser beams from your trusty laser gun. If a fully charged shot hits an enemy, they'll be caught in a flurry of sparks and take extra damage. Masked Hammer. The self-proclaimed king's hard-hitting hammers are now yours. Let the power of the mask take over to unleash a devastating attacks with a fiery flourish. Morphonite Sword. Before the final battle, a fluttering fiend arrives to cast his judgment. This dangerous weapon grants that form to any who wield it. For Kirby, handling this power is... a breeze. Yeah, Kirby has a lot of untapped potential, that's for sure. Or, I, I say untapped in huge quotation marks. He definitely tapped into a lot of his power already, but I'm sure he has a ton more. Big Rig. Big Rig Mouth Kirby. Carrier and... Wait, hold on. This one actually says, but to save two worlds, Kirby's final mouthful must be his biggest. It looks a lot, looks like a lot to handle, but he seems totally fine somehow. Go, Kirby. Carry your and Elphalin's combined hope for the future. Race through the sky and deliver the final blow. Big Red Tortildine. The aggressive boss of all Tortildines dwells within the Forbidden Zone of Redgar. When this hothead finds a suitably sweltering spot, it stays put. It's reckless with its attacks, shooting chunks of concrete out of its mouth to hit far away enemies. Napping Beast. The Beast Pack lives among the remnants of a civilization that left this world far behind. They may not know how to use everything they find, but they always enjoy the simple pleasures, like the scent of pine that lingers on Samufi's favorite napping spot. The Ranger's Great Discovery. This new world is filled with danger and temptation. Any unexpected detour during your adventure could lead to a mountain of treasure. How many other surprises are hiding out there? There's only one way to find out. A duel with Meta Knight. Meta Knight arrived in the new world shortly before Kirby. He did some early scouting and reached as far as the snowy north before deciding to, re to return and protect the town. Now he keeps watch for beastly invaders from his perch by the Colosseum. He's battled Goromondo 30 times and won every bout. <laughs> I never heard like a whole Twitter topic on this, and one of them was uh, saying, "How on how would Goromondo be that uh, reckless to fight Meta Knight like 30 times?" And then someone's like, uh, "Yo yo, like the la I'm ready. Like the last 20 times were a uh, were a fluke. I'm ready this time." It's uh, yeah, and I, I, I imagine each time he tries to fight Goromondo, he d he probably still out of nobility offers a sword, <laughs> and I can just imagine Goromondo reaching straight for uh, his face instead every time. Uh, destined Rivals. But that's just a theory. Planet Popstar's Dining Dest Destined Rivals. That's how King Dedede... Nah, let me, let me restart that. <clears throat> Planet Popstar's Destined Rivals. That's how King DDD usually describes his special relationship. So he was crestfallen when he arrived in the New World and couldn't find Kirby. By the time they finally met, DDD had changed from friendly rival to menace. It's, it really is kind of neat and heartwarming to see that DDD legitimately felt bad that he could not find Kirby and even says, uh, calls, refers to it as a special relationship. It's, uh, it's neat. Like, he always decides to, you know, duel with Kirby as rivals, but it's all in good fun. They're, they're, they're like best buds, really. Adventure together! Bandana Waddle Dee and Elflin have joined Kirby's victory dance. Kirby's dancing is cute and carefree, but his singing voice is super powerful. Let's all sing along with him next time. Woohoo! Great job, Kirby. You know, I think this is one of the only figures in the game that has, like, a legitimate support pole on it. I don't think any of the figures have that. And they're... Well, actually, no, no, no. no that, that's not true. There are definitely other figures that have that. But, uh... 
I don't know, this one seems different because all the other figures in group pictures don't. So, I don't know. Rare Stone Master. It's not clear how or why the space called Treasure Road started to appear behind portals throughout the New World. A strong energy was felt from within, and rare stones were soon discovered as its source. Congratulations on collecting all of them. Weapons Shop Waddle Dee. This energetic craftsman opened his own weapon shop in town. He can power up your copy abilities. All he needs is a blueprint, his trusty hammer, and a little elbow grease. He keeps making the headgear for each evolved ability bigger than the one before. That's how you know they're more powerful. Commentator Waddle Dee. The Colosseum is always ready for battles with brutal beasts, but no one was prepared when a mysterious vortex opened inside the arena. Commentator Waddle Dee was so scared that he almost shut everything down, but his curiosity won in the end. What wild battles await within? It's tournament time! Usher Waddle Dee. After the town was destroyed, this movie loving Waddle Dee decided that the cinema needed to be rebuilt right away. Sure, food and shelter are more important, but so are movies. As for his favorite movie, it probably has to be all of them. The Deedly Dees. It's the local 4D band, the Deedly Dees. Hey, look, the Wii Zach or the <laughs> the Switch is capable of 4D. How about that? They love to jam in front of a crowd and start each request off with a wah wah. Let's go. Band meetings at the cafe can get heated due to their different musical tastes. But when the tunes kick in, they fall perfectly in sync. His primal nemesis, Borgo DDD. The foul fiend standing guard at the bottom of Redgar Volcano was King DDD again? He calmed back down after he removed his medicine mask. So why did he capture kidnap Elphalin? He said he was being controlled even before some strange beast put that mask on him. King of the Beasts, Leongar. Here sits the powerful commander of the Ferocious Beast Pack. He's become a pawn for an invading specimen from beyond the stars, tasked with gathering food, capturing the Waddle Dees to use as a power source, and most importantly, retrieving the lost subspecimen tagged as ID F87. Invasive Species Fecto Forgo Larva When ID F86 arrived, it began attacking all of the native wildlife. The creature was captured soon after a let me restart that. When IDF-86 arrived, it began attacking all the native wildlife. The creature was captured soon after and then turned into a test subject. The native inhabitants used it to create tech beyond their wildest dreams. They eventually used that tech to leave the planet altogether. But IDF-86 remained forgotten and fractured. I believe it's this one. I believe there's a... I forget which figure it is specifically, but in the Japanese version, there is a little bit of text that is missing from the US version. It's not too big of a deal, but it kind of talks into why they left in the first place. And it talks about that dude, this planet here was pretty much getting overpopulated. So they were looking for new lands and uh, this helped with that. But it's like, I always wondered like why everyone left, but they kind of give a, I, I don't know, but that's, I kind of wish they would have left that in, even if it was something minor. Or is that minor? Yeah, you'd be the judge of that one. Invasive species, Fecto Forgo. The invading species, alone and incomplete without Elphalin, was trapped in the internal capsule. Their only refuge was the realm of their dreams. Those dreams spread powerful waves of psychic energy all over the world, slowly taking control of the animals they reached. Escape would require more energy. Ultimate life form, Fecto Elphalis. The Elphalin we first met was born from a small, compassionate soul that hid behind greater, invasive ambitions. Without a soul to temper its power, the creature's spatial teleportation ability ran amok, opening mysterious vortices left and right. And now that they're whole again, they're already planning their next invasion. Strong Arm Delusion, Phantom Goromondo. This illusory beast was created with powerful psychic energy in a realm of dreams. It's not the real Goromondo, just a phantom made of negative thoughts. But it's still incredibly strong since it's based on memories of the real Goromondo. It can't resist a fruity snack. Illusory Fronds, Phantom Tropic Woods. 
This phantom in the form of tropic woods has grown mysteriously strong under the illusory sunlight of Forgo dreams. Do you think it's coconuts are illusions too? Wonder what they taste like. Illusory leopard, phantom chloraline. The real chloraline asked Kirby to help her save Leoncar. This phantom feline is a fake. Formed from negative thoughts and powerful psychic energy, this wild beast doesn't seem to care about Leoncar at all. She may be an illusion, but her claws will cause real damage. His illusory nemesis, Phantom King DDD. This DDD double is made of powerful psychic energy. It's an illusion of the king based on memories of this embarrassing turn under IDF86's control, forced to work for Leongar and capture Elfland. It has no memory of Kirby or the adventures they've shared. It's little more than a haughty, hollow husk. I've seen a lot of uh, vibes between these and the uh, parallel bosses from Heroes Another Dimension. Armor Plated Illusion, Phantom Silly Dillo. Formed from a strong psychic energy and modeled on specific memories of his role in the real world, this phantom copy of Silly Dilla will forever wander Forgo dreams, searching high and low for Elflin and Kirby. At least his dance moves are still impressive. The Lone Illusion, Phantom Meta Knight. The lone illusory foe that you encountered outside the Forgo dreams. When Fecto Forgo tried to control Meta Knight like it had King DDD, the experienced swordsman came out on top through the sheer force of will, but the result was this mysterious doppelganger, formed by the residual psychic energy. It really is cool to know that Meta Knight finally was just fed up with being like controlled by different things and just trained his mind to overcome it. Illusory Primal Nemesis, Phantom Forgo DDD. Forgo DDD was formed when Leongar gave the already controlled king a mask to further cloud his mind. He was then tasked with guarding the only entrance to Lab Discoverer. This phantom copy, based on memories of his terrifying turn, is somehow even stronger and more dangerous than the original. Possessed Beast, Forgo Leon. This specimen tagged as IDF86, left formless and floating after a humiliating defeat, fled to Forgo Dreams to plot their next steps, create a new army of phantom beasts, then claim Leongar's body as their own. When Kirby arrived to force them out, IDF86 had no choice but to reveal their own phantom form. Fluttering Dream Eater, Morpho Knight. The fluttering fiend that casts judgment upon final battles is drawn toward the isolated isles of Forgo Dreams. There, it feasts on the most powerful soul it finds and takes the fearsome form of a scar scarlet clad knight. Let the most challenging battle <laughs> of this new world begin. Uh, yeah, he's a collector of souls, apparently. That's that's cool. I guess that's definitely very similar to the the Grim Reaper, and a piece of Leon's soul. After the fight with Kirby, ID F-86's body was destroyed, but their powerful mind survived. They fled to the isolated isles of their own dreams and brought Leongar with them. To prepare this new vessel, they cast out Leongar's soul, shattering and scattering it throughout the realm of Forgo dreams. Meow meow, wake up Leon. The soul fragments collected by Kirby and Claroline have returned to their owner. Leongar, now restored as Leon, is free of ID F86's corrupting mind control. This world is in good pause once again. Leon and Carol. These two were the famous leaders of the Animal Kingdom until Leon found ID F86. After that, he began speaking in a language Carol couldn't understand. She only speaks in meows and formed the Brutal Beast Pack. She still believed in him. So she formed a new identity of her own and followed along. Species born of chaos, Chaos Elphilis. A unique convergence of elements from native beast souls to ethereal butterfly gave a stubborn soul one last chance at revenge. This new creation, driven by pure chaos, was defeated by the bright light of Kirby's hope. The last bit of life that remained willingly returned to Elflin. At last, two became one. And that's it. That's all the figurines in the game. And that's, at this point, everything there is to do in this game. Thank you all for watching this final Let's Play. It's been fun. Well, I guess now it's time to look forward to canon. See you guys then.